Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day in downtown Denver, and I made the trip out to the Pioneer Cemetery to see the grave of Silas Soul. And what was going to begin just as one stop on the way to see the Sand Creek Massacre site is really deserving of its own video. Silas Soul is probably the most heroic military man I've ever heard of in any capacity, fighting in any period of time. Silas, his entire family was involved with anti-slavery activism. You can see here he was born in 1838, and uh, quickly his family moved to Boston, and then him and his father went to Kansas. And that's because of bleeding Kansas. Uh, you had a situation where the states on the side and south of Kansas were supportive of slavery, and to the north it was anti-slavery. And Kansas was flooded with people trying to make it either pro or anti-slavery. And the most infamous of these were the pro-slavery folks who would do raids along the border and kill people like Silas Soul, who they knew were active in the Underground Railroad. And it was his house along with his father's house that were both very active stops in this uh, sort of underground network that was funneling slaves to the free north. And he quickly became a member of something that was called the Immortal Ten. These were part of the Jayhawkers group, the most elite anti-slavery activists in Kansas. And the Immortal Ten managed to earn their name because a number of slaves had escaped from territory adjacent to Kansas and were trying to escape through it. And a local doctor took them under his wing and tried to protect them, but quickly they were discovered by a posse that was being led to go find the slaves. The doctor was taken and put into a jail cell, uh, awaiting his trial, and the slaves were unfortunately brought back after probably some of them were killed for leading this escape. And uh, Silas pretended to be drunk. And he got into a brawl and he was taken into prison and he convinced the guard to let him out. And he just opened the door for the doctor and they walked out. And it was this kind of fearless attitude that almost led to his rescue of John Brown. He again pretended to be drunk and got into prison. And when he was in there, he offered John Brown the ability to escape. And Brown and other men who were at Harper's Ferry all agreed that they would rather die as martyrs. And that is what they did. And Silas eventually moved out to Colorado with his brother where his story and his connection to Sand Creek begins. They came out here to mine for gold and for coal. And it was quickly discovered that the Civil War was being declared. This was 1861. And he was one of the first men to join the Colorado Volunteers. And he was under the lead of John Chivington. And he became a war hero, Silas did, at the Battle of Glorietta Pass because the Confederacy was very centered around resources and slave labor. And they were attempting to expand their influence into the Wild West. And it, basically what had happened was at, at Glorietta Pass, Chivington and Silas Soul managed to stop them and push them back. That was the farthest west that they got. And under Chivington's leadership, there was a massacre by Native Americans. And it was a small farm 30 miles south of Denver. And the Native Americans were already viewed with a racist attitude. And the North took an attitude, or the Union took an attitude, of anti-slavery activism, and they sort of, some of them feigned that they valued all human beings, but this was mainly, a lot of times, at least from a political standpoint, it was only so that they could gather popular support. But the Native Americans, they considered less than people. And when this attack happened at a farmstead 30 miles south of Denver, the governor issued an order saying that all Native Americans must move into a number of small villages on the plains and fly the Union flag to indicate they were friendly and that they would go out and kill any Native Americans who were against them. And this village of Ara Arapaho and Cheyenne people called Sand Creek was led by Chief Black Kettle. And he was flying the flag of the Union and when the company under Chivington arrived, they flew the white flag to say that they meant no harm. And uh, Silas Soul quickly realized something bad was going to happen, and Chivington uh, was moving his troops in to surround the village and massacre them. And I believe 150 to several hundred were killed. And uh, before the battle began, Silas actually said to Chivington's face, you're a coward and a murderer if you go through with this. And Chivington threatened to hang him, but Silas and several of his men sat the battle out. They refused, or the massacre, they refused to take part in it. And he testified saying, I've never seen a action so brutal. He, he described seeing people, uh, Native Americans, run up and pray to them, and uh, they had their heads bashed in. And after the massacre, Chivington scalped them and brought the scalps to Denver and unfurled the scalps of 150 men, women, and children in front of a theater to glorious applause. And he described it as a battle. But Silas took to writing. Walt Whitman, the president, congressmen, senators, and he finally managed to tarnish Chivington's name. 
and he became known rather than a war hero as the Butcher of Sand Creek. And he retired a year later, and Chivington did, and Silas managed to, he married the love of his life, and only two weeks after, he was walking the streets of downtown Denver, and he heard gunshots in a scuffle in a back alley. And he told his wife, please wait here, I'm gonna go help, because he was a truly altruistic person. It was an ambush by two of Chivington's men, probably hired by Chivington himself to murder him. And that's what they did. And he was buried here. And uh, for years, his rec recognition of Silas went basically unheard of because he was a hero for the Union, but as soon as he started taking these pro-Native American stances, he quickly became inconvenient. And uh, each year, on the run from Sand Creek up to Denver, the Native American people will visit his grave here and recognize his achievements and his outspoken attitude towards them. And so I guess my final takeaway from this is if you are ever given an order that you believe is unlawful or, unlawful or evil, I want you to ask yourself what would Chivington do or what would Silas Soule do? Don't do what Chivington did, do what Silas Soule would do.